the Mythic MTG Tech number 296, looking at a new podcast that has just started to come out. A friend of mine and co-collaborator in the Improving in Magic uh, site on Facebook has launched a wonderful podcast called Kitchen Table Magic. It's a series of interviews with some incredible people in the Magic the Gathering community. Let's just jump in and take a look at a little bit of the stuff that he's done for this. First, take a second and see if you can guess who this first episode is about. Yes. He's created these custom cards as kind of a preview for each of the first three episodes, and this one is just really well done. If you haven't guessed, it is one of the most controversial figures in Magic, Travis Wu. I have met Travis here in the Seattle area. He is an extremely interesting guy. I respect the fact that he will give you his opinion, and he is more than willing to debate, argue, discuss pretty much anything out there. The guy is an avid reader, which did get him into a little bit of trouble over at uh, Channel Fireball, but has redoubled his efforts with a site called Magic for Good and is doing some really innovative things. Let's hear him talk for just a minute about preparing for a GP. Didn't really prepare at all, at all, really. It was draft. Probably did two, maybe three drafts. I'm si this is the night before the tournament. I actually, I think we both had plans on Sunday. Like, we're planning on losing. I I've read The Secret, Rhonda Byrne. is a really famous book where, you know, if you think about something, you make it true. But, I mean, we were thinking we're not going to, we're going <laughs> to lose, right? I mean, I, I don't necessarily believe in The Secret. The night before, I was sitting between Ben Stark and Luis Scott Vargas playing Magic for three or four rounds. So obviously I asked them, okay, how does the format work? Like, what are, you la what are your lands? Do you play first or second, et cetera, et cetera? Watch how they built their sealed decks. And then it's like, well, I haven't actually done anything, but I'm probably way ahead everyone in the tournament just for that. <laughs> yeah. So I remember telling Marshall Sutcliffe, yo, I've got the fire. <laughs> now, all of these interviews have these really interesting personal moments in them where you really get to peer behind the people that are being interviewed and get an idea of what they're about or interesting experiences that they've had. Episode two is one of my absolute favorite people in the Magic community. This is someone who I support on Patreon who has done amazing stuff in the cosplay area. This is Christine Sprankle. She is doing a lot for the casual game and for different ways to enjoy this game. Let's listen to what is my favorite idea from her and something that I've been talking about for a while. What do you see as the future of Magic the Gathering? What I see in the future is a uh, magic convention where it's a place where most of, like all of the magic community can come and gather. Ha ha. And <laughs> it's not an event that is focused on a tournament okay so a bunch of people are like oh gps are magic conventions they're not they're tournaments they're focused around the tournament they're all supposed to be you know they're tor tournament oriented i want a convention which would be focused on all aspects of the community i want panels on the artists on prominent members of the community i want workshops i want an artist alley where it's not just artists from the game but like you know fan artists you know people who do altars who make accessories oh, magic related that. Yeah. I want, I want a magic convention. That's what I see. I am 100% behind this idea, and I will do everything I can, both to try to make this a reality. There are so many different ways that we enjoy the game. It would be wonderful to see her ideas and the way that she helps the community really embodied in a casual convention like this. The interview is full of lots of interesting personal moments about her interactions with artists, how she comes about these really creative cosplay uh, costumes and how she interacts with the magic community. Uh, she went through some rough stuff at the beginning and is now becoming an icon in the magic community. Wonderful interview. The third interview here is someone who I only really knew by name. He's probably one of the more influential people in magic finances. He's a writer over at Quiet Speculation. He's also been to the Pro Tour more than 20 times a very, very strong Magic player. And what caught me most about this particular interview is his discussion of getting better at Magic and the idea of having coaches in Magic. As you guys may know, I teach uh, chess and have coached chess in 
elementary school, middle school, and adult learners. I am shocked that this has not happened already in the Magic community. Let's hear him talk about it a little bit. I'm also doing some coaching uh, with the Magic Mastermind group with Travis Wu. Yeah, that's cool. Tell us more about that. Yeah, so this group, we have a few dozen people who have joined in this team. We, we've had an interview process and we found some really serious competitive people who have the goal of improving their game and improving their success. And we're doing some weekly calls. So a few times a week, the members call in with the coaches and we discuss what's going on in the magic world and their issues and their what's on their mind and the events that are going up and what's going on. And I share what I know and they share what they know. Know, we collaborate and then we also have a forum where we communicate and share ideas and deck lists and it's been a nice process and some of our members are finding success and I've certainly learned some things from it and it helps help me grow as a player. This is an interview that took someone who I only really knew by name and really humanized him. There's another 46 minutes of great content with Adam that shows a pro tour player's perspective on the game and discusses aspects that are useful to both casual and to competitive players overall. The next two episodes have some incredible people on it. Wedge from the Mana Source is coming up in episode four, and Chris Furter, local level two judge to the Seattle area, who really helped grow the legacy community out here a lot, is on episode five. Um, I have an episode coming up later this season. I've been super impressed with Sam's ability to take this podcast and go from zero to 100 miles an hour overnight with really high quality content. I recommend checking it out at kitchentablemagic.org. If you're interested in hearing my top picks for Eldritch Moon or other Magic the Gathering content, subscribe to the channel. If you want to help make this podcast better, become a supporter on Patreon. For a dollar, I, I give you my undying thanks. For two dollars, I do a one-time pack opening. And for five dollars a month, your name gets added to the credits. These are all the wonderful people that support and make this podcast possible. On deck are Simon and Brandon for pack openings. The next pack openings are on July 8th. Until next time, choose the cards wisely.